a flounder at the fish dealer's desk. It was caught some days ago in the northeast Atlantic Ocean. We assume that the fish didn't care who caught it. The vast majority of the world's fishing vessels are of this type, small fishing boats. But big vessels like this one catches the most fish. And the world's fishing business is going this way. Bigger is better. The problem is, as we know, that fish stocks are declining drastically all over the planet. The answers from responsible governments are that we have to reduce capacity. And an easy way to do this is to reduce the number of fishing vessels. In the developed world, we are at the moment reducing the number of these vessels while keeping or actually increasing the number of these. This does not only affect the way fish are caught and the way we interfere in the underwater environment. It also means a lot when it comes to food security, jobs and the way coastal communities are thriving all over the world. Can this fish be indifferent to who catches it? And can we? This short video will examine this question. FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, has developed a set of voluntary guidelines on small-scale fishery. The guidelines will address issues such as food security, biodiversity, conservation and poverty alleviation. The whole idea for the guidelines stems from the fact that the Code of Conduct, the Law of the Sea and all sort of instruments that FAO and the United Nations has to govern the fishery worldwide does not have any meaning to small-scale fishers. COFI, the Committee on Fisheries of FAO, will negotiate the guidelines at the meeting to be held in 2014. Uh, the aim of the guidelines should be twofold at all times. Um, it should be to lay the basis for the development and further growth of the small-scale sector, because there's enough room out there for the small scale to, to exist and to grow. But at the same time, that growth must be protected from, from elements that want to take over, elements that want to nudge us out of existence, like big industry or, or governments or corrupt entities out there who feel they need to go a different route, that we're not important for the GDP or whatever. Well, that sounds good. UN is taking care of it. But it should be remarked that the guidelines proposed strengthening the recognition, the rights and the possibilities of small-scale fishers around the globe should focus on developing countries only. The EU representative to Kofi was particularly vocal about that. Now, how can that be? One of the reasons might be that 60% of the fish consumed in EU come from waters outside EU. So from an EU perspective, food security means to think big and far-reaching. Maybe that's why the EU representative in Kofi speaks so eagerly about the small-scale fisheries guidelines only applying to the South. What's good for them is actually not good for us. So our, or EU's, policy will be to support small-scale fisheries in the developing world while supporting a high-capacity industrial fleet at home. It is in the light of the almost exhausted fish stocks in the European waters understandable that EU supports the current upscaling of our fishing fleet. We're going to fish the surplus stocks in foreign waters. Our own waters are to be spared by reducing the number of vessels operating here. And the policy works. There are fewer fartsers, they are becoming smaller, and they are becoming more effective, they are becoming more financial. That's good. And that's good for the domestic flow. This is essentially a result of this regulation, and it has in reality been a desired or a desired result that has come out of it. In EU, the number of boats are reduced every day, and the types of boats that are scrapped are these. Jebe Hust is telling about the consequences in Denmark. Since 2005, we've seen 35 harbors lose their commercial fishing activity. 
and another 35 uh, have half the amount of vessels that they had in 2005. So this has had severe impact. The numbers of active fishers are reduced and jobs are lost. Check. The numbers of small active fishing harbours are reduced. Check. The numbers of young people engaged in local fisheries are reduced. Check. And small villages and whole communities are actually dying out. Check. That's the price. And we are willing to pay that price. The small-scale fisherman has become outdated like the horseshoe blacksmith, the typesetter and the traffic cop. We don't need them anymore. Other types of fisheries are taking over. That's the natural evolution and it's probably the best way. Or probably it's not. Is big necessarily better, cheaper or more environmentally friendly? To answer that, we might have to define what's actually seen as small-scale fisheries. It's no easy task. Put two fishermen, or even worse, two experts in a room and they can discuss forever. And that's understandable. Conditions and cultures are different all over the world, even from harbour to harbour. But what most can agree upon is that small-scale fisheries have a low environmental impact, relatively small carbon footprint, an important positive socio-economic impact, jobs creation and food security, with a high opportunity cost if lost, and a high level of skills and knowledge about ecosystems that is worth keeping. The European Commission has actually proposed a definition. Marine small-scale fishing activities should be defined as those using vessels under 12 metres in length and non-towed gears. Remember towed gears? Well, there are towed gears and there are towed gears. Joking aside, it actually makes sense. There's a huge difference in the environmental impact of trawl versus non-towed gears. Not that old-fashioned small-scale fishers can't empty fish stocks. They can do that, as history shows. When Christianity took hold of most of Northern Europe around the dawn of the second millennium, the demand for fish increased. Fish were seen as less fleshy than other animals and so less likely to incite sexual passion. Prohibitions on meat eating resulted in more than 100 fish eating days per year. This, and a growing population, resulted in a rising demand for fish that soon outstripped the supply of freshwater fish and around 1,050, a radical shift to consumption of marine fish is seen in Europe. Fish stocks can be fished down very quickly even with old, non-towed gears. But with the invention of the trawler in the 14th century, things took off. Oh no, you cry out, not that again. Not that old, trawling is harmful again. Yes, here it comes again. Because Europe has a serious problem. Our fish stocks, especially the demersal, bottom-dwelling fish, are actually diminishing so fast that it looks like extermination. Uh, what we've seen the last few years is a shift uh, from gillnets to trawling. Uh, it's, especially in some areas, the amount of fish caught by trawl is now the double as it was earlier. And more or less in every catch area, uh, we see an increase of uh, trawling. Then we have trawlers, sustainable trawlers, ladies and gentlemen. That doesn't exist because trawlers, they do, they pick flowers. You see this? At the bottom, these are not flowers. These are structures that take hundreds of years to emerge. These are animals. And they disappear when you troll. They don't like it. And at the end, you have this polvo mud soup that is in the North Sea, in the North of Gascon, in everywhere we have been trolling. We have a changed habitat. Well, that is actually sustainable. We transform the world, but we don't remember it. We adjust our baseline to the new level, and we don't, we don't recall what was there. Think about it. There was a time when farm workers refused to have salmon for dinner more than three times a week. They wanted anything else but fish. There was an abundance of fish in European waters. And speaking of old times, there's an old saying. 
we've got the right speed, but the wrong direction. And there is some truth to it when it comes to fisheries policies. The EU keeps giving subsidies to companies that invest in bigger boats with more efficient gears that use more subsidised fuel to fish an ever-dwindling fish stock. Even though numbers from FAO show that small-scale fisheries are much more energy efficient than large-scale, the amount of gas spent to catch one kilo of fish is less than one-fourth on average. The reason why we Europeans still have fish enough for our markets is that 60% of it come from waters outside of EU. Europe has more than 700 EU flag vessels operating outside of the EU, EU waters and many, many more vessels operating under joint ventures or third country flags, especially in the waters of developing countries. And for how long will the developing world let us take resources out of their waters? Do not colonize the seas of the global south. Colonialism belongs in the past. The marine resources found in the waters of developing countries belong to the people of that country. Ma'am, there's no such thing as surplus stock. Maybe it's time to consider the direction we are going. Most of us agree that there is an urgent need for regulations in the fisheries and regulations need monitoring. And it's so much easier to control a few huge vessels than hundreds of small. That's probably right. It was never easy to control the fisheries, but it's worth remembering that when big scale fisheries cheat, they cheat big time. This is just one example from Denmark, where illegal fish for millions were landed and circulated into the EU fish market. The examples of illegal fishing are plenty. This kind of cheating has a huge impact on the stocks and the environment. So maybe it's worthwhile to come up with ways of management that will enable small-scale fishers to participate actively in the conservation of stocks. There might even already exist mechanisms at the micro level in Europe today that are worth building upon. Je pense que une des une des solutions est de donner le de redonner le pouvoir aux, aux organisations professionnelles. <coughs> en Méditerranée, il y a des organisations professionnelles qu'on appelle Prudomi qui existent depuis 150 ou 200 ans. Et elle à l'époque et dur, durant ces 200 ans, elles étaient là pour organiser la pêche de façon par rapport au nombre de bateaux, aux heures de sortie, aux engins utilisés, au maillage parce que la, la taille de la maille ça existe depuis pas mal de temps et tout, tout ça faisait en sorte que c'était les, les vrais gestionnaires de la pêche sur un secteur donné. Kofi, the FAO Committee on Fisheries, have placed small scale fisheries on its agenda. EU should be part of this agenda, also when it comes to ourselves. We in Europe should work to make the voluntary guidelines apply to our own fisheries, for the benefit of our seas and our many, many small fishing communities at the outskirts of Europe. The different EU fishing bodies will probably concentrate on securing our pelagic fisheries and point out that the near-coast fisheries within the 12-mile zone are the jurisdiction of the member states themselves. And they are right. But without a concerted effort from our EU representatives, there will be no fish to catch in that zone for anybody in the future. This fish may not care if it was caught by a large trawler or a small-scale fisher. But the fish population does. And we, Europeans, have very good reasons to care too. We transform the world, but we don't remember it. We adjust our baseline to the new level, and we don't, we don't recall what was there.